Oh, gee, thanks, P. You're welcome. Oh, 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 oh. DA's office. That's Boyosi. You're a Robert Guy. Bob. Uh, I'm assigned to this case. Uh, we have a body. We don't have a case. I'd like to get involved early. You want to be here? It's not a bad idea. Let folks know who you are. Let me tell you something. Uh... Vince. Right, Vince. Just for the record. I don't need an assistant DA sitting in on an investigation, so just keep your eyes open and you might learn something. What do you got? Someone torched the place. After drilling our friend here. Ain't pretty. You ever seen a stiff before? Yeah. How many in the chest? Three. Thorough. Where's the wife? We're working on that. at you. I didn't even know it was you when you knocked down the door. Cut it out, Gloria. Cut it out nothing. You lost all that weight. You did something with your hair. So what happened? After your divorce, you met someone, right? I just lost the weight, that's all. Had to be someone you were doing this for. Girl doesn't change that much. Well, yeah, I did meet someone. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind someone. Who? What? He's, well, he's wonderful. I mean, the way he looked at me was like nobody ever did. It was like a whole new world. 
I mean, I was always the fat girl in the corner, you know. I always thought I had to go out with anyone who asked. If anyone asked, and they never did. So what happened? He was married, right? Creep wouldn't leave his wife. You go back to Henry. Jeez, honey, I don't know. Going back to him's not the answer. Maybe it is. Get real, sweetie. He's never gonna be anything but a stock clerk. No, he's not, is he? mother. Hi, Mom. What's up? What? Oh, my God. I don't know. As soon as I can. What? Our house burned. What? Henry's dead. Sergeant Guy, I appreciate you coming in. I know how hard this must be for you. The thing is, man, that fire was set. Whoever shot your husband was trying to cover it up. But no one would shoot Henry. Well, maybe someone at work, uh, someone who was giving him a hard time. Henry didn't make enemies. He wasn't that kind of person. Well, somebody shot him, ma'am. Anything you can think of, ma'am. Anyone he might have had a quarrel with. Look, you don't understand. Henry didn't argue with anyone, ever. He was a very unassertive man. In fact, that's why we got divorced. You were divorced? Yes, we were. I kept trying to get him to do something with himself. I yelled at him a lot, just to see if I could build a fire under him. He never argued back. Not to me, not to anyone. But you were living with Henry Stockton, that is correct. Yes, we remarried. Just last month. I wanted to try again. I guess I just couldn't live without him. Well, you've been very helpful, ma'am. There is just one other thing. Um, we picked up fingerprints at your house, and we are going to need a set of your prints for comparison. My fingerprints? Yes, ma'am. If you just give me your left hand here, this will only take a second. Does this mean I'm being arrested? Uh, no, ma'am. Like I told you, this is just for comparison to the prints that we found in your house. Oh. Whoa. take a bath. You can join me if you like. Well, I'm going to take a bath. What's the matter, Kat? I don't know, Ellen. Don't you love me anymore? <laughs> of course I do. You never want me. It's not true. There's no one like you, Kat. Maybe I don't tell you enough. Come on, look at yourself. Look in the mirror. Look at your legs. Your hips. Your breasts. Don't you have any idea how beautiful you are? How it makes me feel. 
feel when I go anywhere with you? Hmm? What were you looking for? I wasn't... You weren't what? You were in my drawer. What did you think you were going to find? Huh? This? You wanted my gun? Alan, I didn't. <laughs> oh, of course not. What would you want with my gun? Ah, oh, I'll bet this is it. Am I right? You've been checking the phone bill. You wanted to know who I've been calling. Alan, I thought... No, you didn't think! You didn't think at all! Now, don't worry about who I'm calling. Okay, Ken? Okay? Go ahead and start the bath. I'll be right in. I should don't want to anymore. Uh, of course. That's an answer? What kind of answer is that? All I'm telling you is what we know, which is nothing. This is a nothing little guy. He didn't have an enemy in the world. Oh, so he shot himself twice in the head, put three in his chest to make sure. What about a weapon? We don't have a weapon. It wasn't found. But you know what it is, right? It's a 22, right? Uh -huh. Now take a look at this. All this junk, it's found in the house. There, it's a receipt for a 22 in the wife's name. I'll check it out. You don't think so? The woman was 140 miles away all weekend. Her alibi checks top to bottom. Look, let me give you a little advice, huh? Patience. Don't try and set the world on fire. That is not how this works. Oh, really? You want to tell me how it works? Yeah. You play the hand that you were dealt. These things, they work out. No. You make them work. You make them work. Do you smoke? No. Come on. It's not that I don't love him. I do. But he makes things so tense. He seems ready to explode all the time, and, and, and I get scared, and then I do all the wrong things, and he gets... Violent? Not really. I, he's never done anything. What about infidelities? He makes phone calls when he thinks I can't hear. I called the number. It, it's a woman. Well, that's something we could look into. I don't want to drag him through. Listen, a divorce is like a marriage. It sets the terms between two people. If one side holds back, it's unbalanced. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes? Mrs. Brown is here. I don't think I can go through with that. Well, think it over. If you decide what you're going to do, give us a call. Okay, you can send her in now. popular with the ladies. Nice piece. Do you remember the particular lady? <laughs> also a nice piece. Uh, blonde, built. Why would she do off her old man with it? What makes you say that? Well, I might have done the same myself. I mean, the guy was like a total pain, you know? World's greatest gun expert. Hmm. 20s? Kind of heavy set, sitting here? No. Nah, this guy was built like he worked out. Dark hair, everything perfect. I just, like, I didn't even know you were there. Did you get his name? Never said it. But you'd recognize him. I like to stay out of these things, you know. Wouldn't we all?
I'll be okay. It just it happened so fast. He came right at me. Did you see the driver? No, I didn't see anything. Just just this car right on top of me. Doctor says you broke some ribs. They thought it was a lot worse. <laughs> Felt like everything broke. You're a tough one, Cat. I'll have you up and around in no time. Are you sure you didn't get a look at the driver? Because I still have friends in the force. If they ever catch that son of a bitch, I want five minutes in a room with him. people there and you only have one witness? Yes, sir. Offer him manslaughter, see if he takes it. Now, turn into our undefeated champion. You're carrying quite a caseload, Mr. Bugliosi. Would you fill us in? Anderson, I've rested. The defense starts tomorrow. And your summation's already written, right? I hope you all take notice of this. Mr. Bugliosi writes his summations before he even selects his jury. <clears throat> Sanchez is in pretrial motions and Stockton, the wife, looks like a suspect. Based on what? The gun receipt, to the fact that her husband was insured? That and her demeanor, sir. You don't really have this gun, just the fact that she owned one. Then you don't really know it's the murder weapon. Let's look at the insurance. Two policies, right? $15,000 from his job and $75,000 she took out after they were married. Expensive premiums. Not if you die a month after the wedding. It's still not a case, Mr. Bugliosi. It's barely even the start of a case. Five bullets in Henry Stockton, sir. That was the start of the case. Give it a rest, Michael. You're working too hard. Hi, Alan. Uh, I was just finishing these expense sheets. That's what they invented tomorrow for. Come on. I'll buy you a drink. I want to show you something. Me? No, your desk lamp. Yes, of course you, you knucklehead. It's a business proposition. I want your opinion. I mean it. Stay by the door. Don't move. Try and look tough. Will! How you doing, Alan? You tell me, Will. Thought it over? I'm not sure there was anything to think over. You were going to come back with another offer. I'm sorry. I guess there's been some little mistake made here, Will. A little misunderstanding. As I remember it, I already made you an offer. A very sincere offer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ten grand. I mean, is that the best you can hey, do? Hey, hey, hey. That's the best you're going to get. Well, you're not doing any business here. And let's face it, I don't see it getting any better in the near future, you know what I mean? So it's a bit slow. Yeah, it's a little slow. And it could get slower. You hear what I'm saying? Now look, Will, maybe you don't care, but I'm giving you a chance to get out of this thing with something to show for it. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. 
All right, good. Now look, just go ahead and get the papers I gave you. We'll sign them, and hey, it's a done deal. Yeah. Okay. I got it in his head on with the mob. Ten grand, this place is mine. That is amazing. You know that? But ten thousand, where are you gonna get that kind of money? Maybe I am with the mob. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. No, I uh, I did a job for somebody. I should be getting some hard cash pretty soon. So what do you think, huh? I mean, I know the whole thing's got to change, but I'm thinking indirect lighting, new booths, and maybe go with kind of like a, uh, I don't know, like a royal motif, you know? Like, uh, like the royal flush, king's castle, something like that. Who think? Home sweet home. <laughs> Would you like something to eat? Uh, huh? No. Or how about something to drink? A ginger ale. You want a ginger ale? I don't write out with text. How about that book I gave you in the hospital? Would you like something to read? No, maybe you could bring my pad and I could do some sketches. Okay. There you go. There we are. Go ahead. for a little while. I'll be back as soon as I can. You'll be fine. We're going to have two very attractive young ladies behind the bar. A jukebox with the best tunes in the world right over there. Beautiful, beautiful booze right along that wall. You know what I'm going to call it? Grand Duke. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's beautiful, Ellen. It's just, I love it. It's everything you ever wanted, isn't it? Well, it's getting there. No, this is it. It's perfect. You can get married now and... Hey, 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 hey. You're my tiger, aren't you? Let's not settle down yet. We got things to do, kid. I mean... This place is just the start. Besides, I still got a wife. <laughs> Too soon to be talking about getting married. <laughs> yeah, but she'll divorce you. I know she will. You divorced Henry. That didn't get you anything, did it? Oh, come on, Tiger. Come on. Come on. Listen, listen. There's more than one way to end a marriage. doing what are you doing don't start painting until these things are covered this is brand new naga hide i just bought this stuff cover the booths and then start
are you doing? I, I tried to leave you a note, Alan. I, I didn't know what, what to say. What, so, so you leave like that? You run away to your mother? I'm your husband. You, can, you can't just run away from me like that. It's not working, Alan. Can't you see that? Ever since I came back from the hospital... Don't tell me what's not working! I'll tell you when it's over, okay? I'll tell you when it's over, okay? Ellen, okay? I, I can't. I can't live like this. What's can't... this? Huh? What's this? My, my drawings. I, I thought I'd show someone them and try and get a job. What, with this garbage? This is nothing. Look at this. this Ellen, is, this stop is, this it! Is, this is nothing. What do you want from me? I can't live with a man who scares me. I just can't. Fine. You don't want to live with me? You don't have to. Ellen, if we could just... Hey, you made your decision. You don't want to live with me? Fine. Fine. Then go. Go ahead. Go. Look, I'm trying not to make waves here, Mr. Bugliosi, but my client's been through hell. You know that. She's lost her husband, her home. I'm trying to think of her well-being. Of course. So let me get to the point. The police have come around again. They want to talk with her. They've already talked with her twice. It's getting on her nerves. So I figured I'd come down here and talk with you and find out what this is all about. It's about her husband's murder. Well, she doesn't know anything about that. And yet they keep coming around. I don't have to tell you, sensitivity, it's not this strong suit. I figured if you could put in a word... Well, if she doesn't want to answer their questions, she doesn't have to. But I think she ought to answer mine. You do want to find your husband's killer, don't you? One of the things we're trying to clear up, Mrs. Stockton, is about a 22 caliber gun, a pistol. You own a 22, don't you? Hey, hey, wait a minute. You can ask her about her husband's friends, that's one thing. You're asking her about a gun? A 22. Let's get one thing straight right here and now. Is my client a suspect or not? If your client were a suspect, Mr. Kerwin, she would have been informed of her rights. Well, then let's get off this gun stuff, huh? If the gun was in the house, the killer might have used it. Do you own a 22? No. Here's a receipt for a 22, Mrs. Stockton. It's in your name. I went with a guy when I was divorced, and he liked to go target shooting, so he bought me that gun. Where is this gun now? We broke up. I gave it back to him. I would really like to talk to him. Well, his name is Dick Scott. He lives in the valley. I'm not sure where. Do you have a phone number? No. He gave you a gun, but you don't have his phone number. She got married. She didn't keep the phone numbers of the men she dated. Right, right. Well, that was my major concern. You've answered my question. Mrs. Stockton, for somebody who carries so much life insurance... Ah. Could you let him speak to you like that? Just routine questions. Questions? Well, you got her old sugar. Get a hold of the insurance company. Tell them I want a 24-hour notice before they pay off. Go down to the auto club where she works. Talk to anybody there who knows her. Only don't talk to her, because the next time you do, you're going to have to read her her rights. Look, I know you don't want to make trouble, man. Next time you might not be so lucky. I'm sorry, no one's allowed. I just want to talk to my wife. Come on, pal. I'll just talk to her, you. just to explain. It's okay, let him in. You sure? He'll be right outside the door. Yeah. 
He wants you to press charges, doesn't he? I didn't sign anything, Ellen. Maybe you want to. I don't want to make any trouble for you. He said if... See what I mean? You're so good. And forgiving. I don't forgive you. I thought you were going to kill me. Kill you? I love you, Kat. Don't, Ellen. I panicked, that's all. I got scared. I thought I was going to lose you, Mama. No good, Cat. I, I can't control myself. You deserve better than that. If we got a divorce, at least you'd be safe. Is this is the truth, Ellen. You want to marry that other woman, don't oh, you? No. No, I just couldn't bear the thought of doing this to you again. That's all. I know you hate me, Cat, and I, I deserve it. I couldn't stand losing you. <laughs> you won't need this anymore. sends me these. He's supposed to handle them. <laughs> these forms are supposed to be processed in your department. I don't think so. Let's take a look. The district attorney had me in. He was asking for the gun. And you told them you gave it back to Dick Scott, isn't that right? Yeah. Well, what's Mr. Scott going to tell them? He doesn't exist. Yeah, I know, but they're driving me crazy. I just wish they'd go away. Well, then we'll go away. We'll fly up to Vegas or something. That's not going to make them stop, Alan. Look, did you kill him? No, oh, of course not. You know that. Well, then there's nothing to worry about, is there? Oh, my God. That's one of them. There's nothing to worry about. Just stay calm. It's going to have to be processed this way because it was the father's car but the son was driving. If you don't reference back to that, it's not going to track. Okay? All right. Mrs. Stockton? Mr. Scott? I'm sorry? Mr. Scott? No, my name's Alan Polico. Oh, my fault. I thought you were somewhere else. Is there something you want to talk to me about, officer? Not at the moment, no. Try it that way. It'll try. Thank you. So you're a cop. Anything I can do to help you? Maybe. We're looking for a man Mrs. Stockton dated last year, named Dick Scott. You know what I used to do? Check motor vehicle registrations, phone records, social security numbers. You used to do that, huh? Yeah. I was a cop, too. Right here in L.A. What are you working? I'm a side. You wouldn't know anyone else that Mrs. Stockton was dating while she was divorced, would you? Sure. Me. Ah, well, you know how it goes. It just didn't work out. But she is kind of pretty, don't you think? Hmm. Nice day. We're looking for a guy, a boyfriend, capable of murder. And here's his character, right 
in front of us. He's an ex-cop. He's kicked off the force for arranging an abortion. Plus, he put his wife in the hospital. My detective what? does not put these two facts together. It's not all tidy like law school. It's the real world, Vince. No. In the real world, you kill somebody, you go to prison. Now, you're a sensible person, right? I hate this part. Follow me a minute. Yeah, okay. How long does it take to get tired enough of your husband to want to kill him? I'd say you've got a month, month and a half. <laughs> Sandra Stockton. She divorces her husband. She remarries him. One week later, she takes out 75 grand worth of life insurance on him. Five weeks later, somebody puts five bullets in him. A bullet for every week. I think that's kind of sweet. This is a very sweet lady. My guess is she married him to kill him. Don't you listen to any of this. Okay. We gotta go check out their little trip to Vegas. You wanna come? We're going to Las Vegas? Call the sitter. I haven't done this since high school. I didn't know you in high school. See what you missed? Come in the back. <laughs> Sorry. What? I keep expecting my father to start blinking the porch light. Who are you doing all this heavy parking with? Mm -mm. You brought it up. You're the one who invited me to sit in a car. It brings back memories. What, would you have rather dragged out to the airport to meet him? I wouldn't have minded a quick trip to Las Vegas. I can't ring the doorbell at this hour and get his wife home. How come his wife gets to sleep? He's coming back with evidence. Don't you want to find out what he found out? Why do I think you would have told me? I didn't want to be out here by myself. You were such a baby. Come in the back. <laughs> That's him. Yeah? What are you doing here? What happened? I got a pit boss who saw him. A room clerk, a couple of waitresses, and the mater d. You have positive ID on the widow and Polico. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, sorry. My wife, Gail. Bob Guy. I need you to get arrest warrants for both of them. I'm gonna get search warrants for his place and her place. We're looking for the 22 ammunition, phone records, banking records. Nice meeting you. I'd like a couple of wallet size for my mom and dad. I need to speak with you. Take a look at this. Three deposits to his account that match withdrawals from hers. Which proves? They're payoffs for killing her husband. The minute she collects on the first policy, she gives him half. She can give her money to any gigolo she damn well pleases. It's not a crime. It's evidence of a crime. They went to Vegas together. They traveled under assumed names. That shows consciousness of guilt. He told us he dated her when she was divorced. Phone records. Constant contact before she was remarried to Stockton, while they were married, up to and after the time he was killed. So she's promiscuous. It is still not murder. For that, you need evidence. I've got evidence. Circumstantial, all of it. It's nothing. I can win this on circumstantial evidence. You know I can. That perfect record of yours has gone to your head, Mr. Bugliosi. You think you can do your magic in front of a jury, send anyone you want to prison? That is not how it works. Not if you're working for me. Now, you play by the same rules as everybody else. That means you get me the gun. You get me as prince inside the house. You get me even one witness. Until then, we don't prosecute. We're talking about cold-blooded, premeditated murder for profit. Cut them loose. They killed her husband. They're having a party with the money. I said cut them loose. You mean that's it? I can go? I'll have the officer drive you home. I sure hope she doesn't sue you guys. Why don't you let us worry about that? 
If I could put in a good word with her for you. But hey, listen, as far as I'm concerned, no hard feelings. I know you guys are just doing your job. Just not doing it very well, that's all. Hey, Vince, Vince. Have you got a minute? You know, I know all about you, Mr. Bugliosi. I know that you are one hotshot DA. But you know what? You're no different than me, really. I mean, you're just a guy trying to make it, that's all. Now, come on, let's face it. Only losers play by the rules. You and me, we take chances. I'm just like you, Vince. Whatever it takes. I'm not somebody you can just push around. I'm not some clerk in an office. That's why you can't touch me. Not now. Not ever. Not ever. Guess that's the best thing. I mean, if you can afford it. Pardon me. No, I, I just meant. It. I guess he he left you some insurance or something. Yeah. He was a thoughtful husband. You want to know exactly how much insurance he left? I was just making conversation, Alan. Good. Good. That's what I pay you to do. What do you mean? That's what he's paid to do. Didn't I tell you? He's working for me now. He wasn't going anywhere in that dead-end job, so I offered him a future. Come on. Let's dance. I really don't think I'd be here. Why not? All my friends are here. You're one of my friends, aren't you? You know what I mean. Everybody's gonna see us together. There's nothing wrong with that. Not anymore. It's just gonna cause trouble. From who? Yossi? Hey, he took a shot and missed. That's over now. You haven't told me anything about that other policy. Now that you're clear, they got a pay tag. My lawyer says we should hear soon. Yeah, well, just don't let him stall us out on this thing. How are you? That's mine. All right. Listen, you know the plan. Yeah, I know the plan. She's part of it. Oh, come on. She doesn't mean anything to me. Come on. You're my tiger, aren't you? Aren't you? Huh? I don't like it, Alan. And don't watch. Michael. Take Mrs. Stockton home. Thank 
Someday this will all be yours. Cut it out, Alan. Okay. You think I'm kidding? Look around. Be a bad light. <laughs> all you gotta do is marry me. How can I marry you? I don't know you. That's no problem. As soon as we're married, I'll tell you everything you want to know about me. A wife can't testify against her husband. What do you say? Let's get married. Ask me again in six months. You don't get it, do you? I'm asking you now. In six months, I'll be married to somebody else. working because it should be working you get a new car everything should work oh it's working it's just so damn hot what are you made of asbestos the roads are melting it's a state of mind michael if you let it bother you it bothers you you know i saw a new place we should look at nice neighborhood it's got a lot of possibilities you haven't even paid off this one yet hey you don't make things happen, Michael. They don't happen. Listen, how would you feel about managing the Grand Duke while I got this new place started? Great. Good. But hey, you're right. First, I should pay off the Grand Duke. How long do you think that'll take? Take care of it today. There's an envelope for me in that mailbox. Go pick it up, will you? That's Sandra's house, isn't it? Uh-huh. I mean, I go on, drove go her. Go on, go on, go yeah. on. business now, Michael. Were you just going to sit there? Drive. Come on, let's go. Tuesday. Vance, clean him down. On Tuesday. Vincent! I'd like to talk to you a minute. Sure. I gotta go. Bye. What is it? I hear you've reopened the Stockton case. I never closed it. It's all over, Vince. The second insurance company just paid off. Damn! You know, those guys, they told me they were gonna tell me before they did anything. Vince, did you hear me? Both insurance companies are finished with this thing. Does that mean anything to you? If I could just find out what happened to the money, I'm going to be fine. Well, what fine. are you going to do, subpoena more documents? <laughs> you know, they'll sue us for harassment. Well, that'll get them in court. And what? You get your name in the headlines again for winning another unwinnable case. Bugliosi's brilliant summation sends everyone to jail. Vincent, let me be very clear. If you find evidence, you I've can... got evidence. It's the same as last time. Half the money. Half the money. Hard evidence, a witness, the gun. What if I never get any of that? What if it never happens? Well, sometimes that happens, Vincent. It isn't a perfect world. Maybe. And maybe I'll lose a case in front of a jury someday. But I'm not going to do it sitting on my butt in this office. Oh, come on, Vincent. You have worked hard enough on this case. Come on, take it. I'm sorry, sir. What is it? This burglary case I'm prosecuting, the defendant has some information, says he wants to make a deal. Well, find out what he's got, but don't promise him anything. 
If it's any good, you can come back to me. He won't talk to me, sir. He only wants to talk to Vince. Huh? He says it's about a gun. He says you know the one he means. What do you got for me, Counselor? <laughs> That's not how it works, Jack. You tell me what you know. I see what I can do. I don't make promises. Oh, come on, man. You can do better than that. All right, 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 all right. This works out, you just do the right thing. All right. All right, this is the way it is. Alan Polico, you're interested, right? Yeah. I found some stuff for him. What kind of stuff would that be? Jewelry? You want specifics or ring? Wedding-like, big diamond. I'm not interested in hot jewelry, Jack. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're looking for a gun, right? The one he off this sucker with, right? Just tell me what you know. You just better do the right thing. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, this is the way it is. He takes the ring, and then he says, like, have I got anything else? So I say, like, what? He says he's looking for a clean piece. Now, he's very concerned it's clean. So I say, yeah, I got this piece. Same place I got the ring, way in the back of this guy's closet. Ain't never been used. Can't get a piece cleaner than that, right? Been very helpful, Jack. Yeah. Want to hear the funny part, Counselor? That piece didn't even work. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it worked. Just kept jamming, though. You got to work the action manually. Action? What are you talking about? This is a, this is a revolver, right? A twenty-two. Man's talking about a 22. I'm talking about a 25. There goes my deal. <laughs> what the hell, counselor? You know, next time he ices someone, he'll use the 25. We'll have a head start on him. I don't know how else to say it. I've got that bar that I always wanted now. Money in the bank. But it's just no good without you, Cat. I don't know whether you're crazy or think I am. Look, I know I made mistakes. I, I know I wasn't much of a husband. It's not even in a box, Alan. What happened? You gave it one of your women and she gave it back. That's not fair, Kat. Stop playing the hurt child, Alan. I'm tired of hearing that whatever you don't like isn't fair. I love you, Kat. As much as I'm capable of loving any woman. Yeah, well, that's the problem, isn't it? You don't want a wife. You just want someone to be married to. I'm sorry you're all alone, Alan. I'm sorry she turned you down, whoever she is. But I'm happy for her. She doesn't know how lucky she is. You're the lucky one, Kat. You don't know how lucky you are. He'll be here any minute. Anybody answer that waitress ad yet? Not yet, Alan. Alan, we have to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit down. You want a drink? I'll have Michael get you some. Are you in How can you be so cold? I can't sleep, Alan. I'm scared. I keep dreaming about Henry. Yeah, well, I guess I didn't know him like you did. It's not funny, Alan. <laughs> now, listen to me. You've got the bar. It's going to be a success. Why can't we just get married? We've been through that already. Oh, but I can't stand it anymore. You can't stand it anymore? You can't stand it anymore? What does that mean, you can't stand it anymore? I'm scared, Alan. Are you sure you know what you're scared about? Huh? Do you want me to tell you? Just think back and remember who you were when I found you. You were the little fat girl, remember? Size 16 dresses. 
I know that, Ellen. Now look at yourself. Look in the mirror. That's Ellen you're looking at. And do you want to go back to the way it used to be? Do you want to be that fat girl no one looks at? No, Ellen. And we do everything just the way we planned it. But you've already got the... I've got nothing! You think I want to spend the rest of my life running this place? Huh? <clears throat> We're almost there, baby. We're almost home. Don't let me down, Tiger. I can't, Alan. I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You just gotta be tough, that's all. Come on now. You're my tiger, aren't you? You know what you ought to do? You ought to join a gym. Work out. It's good for the tension. Now, I'm going to give you a call later on, okay? All right? Take care. Michael, take a break. Come here. You're a smart guy, Michael. You're pretty sophisticated. Let me ask you a question. Hypothetical. Sure. Say two people get together and they commit a crime. Say they kill someone. And then one of them starts getting weak. What's this about? What do you think the stronger one should do in a case like that? Do you think that he'd be justified in killing the weaker one? I mean... It's two questions, really. Is it the smart thing to do? And is it right? For a strong person, I mean. I don't think about things like that, Alan. I gotta finish the books. Listen, listen, listen. We don't talk enough, Michael. You know? You're my main man. We gotta be close. We used to work together, right? I mean, we kind of had the same job. Yeah, kind of. Well, don't you ever wonder how I got all the money for this? Not really. Yes, you do. You picked up money from me from Sandra. Don't tell me you don't wonder why she gave it to me. I killed her husband. But you're a bright guy. You figured that out already, didn't you? Why are you telling me this? What if I went and told somebody? What if I told the police? Well, in the first place, they can't do anything. They already tried. And in the second place, I'd have to blow your head off. Hello? Be right with you. I'm the owner. What's Hi, your name? I'm Judy Davis. Hi, Judy. Sit down. See, what we're trying to do here is uh, upgrade this place, give it a little class. I'm sure you could help us in that respect. Michael, you want to bring us a couple Irish coffees? Well, what do you think? You think you'd fit in here? Uh, well, I don't know, Mr. Alan, please. I'm sure you would. You're just what the place needs. You're just what I need. <laughs> What's your name again? Judy. Do you, Alan, take Judy to go to law? Sickness and health, in sorrow and in joy. Till death do you part. I do. Right. 
bride is now preparing for her first night of nuptial pleasure. You want me to tell you how it comes out? Don't make fun of me, Ellen. It's supposed to be fun. It was a nice wedding, actually. A little on the tacky side, but not bad. The bride was radiant. Stop it, Ellen. Don't do this. What's the matter? Aren't you happy for me, Tiger? A little appreciation, huh? Alan, honey. Be right there, baby. I think you should know. Ellen got married last week. So? She's barely in her 20s. I think she should be protected. Protected? He tried to kill me. I think he's going to do the same thing to her. If he makes some sort of a threat, ma'am, then I... Maybe I, I should speak to the prosecutor, sir. I'll make sure that he gets your message. There's no need to do that. You won't do anything, will you? guys love you. It's terrific for business. It just can't be all the time, that's all. I don't want this place empty when you're not here. Yeah, but it can be here all the time, Alan. Say you get pregnant. You want kids, don't you? And how is that supposed to happen? All right, all right, all right what? Alan, we've been married a month. You're never home. Baby, listen, I'm trying to build something here. I know, but we got to try to build something between the two of us. I mean, that apartment is so lonely. I miss you so much. I miss you too, baby. Then wake me when you come home. Hey, listen. I'll do better than that. Why don't you pull a couple of steaks out of the freezer? I'll pick up a bottle of wine. Okay. We'll make up for lost time. Okay. You won't forget the wine? Hey, do I ever forget? No. Oh, and you better pick up some gas. Well, it's not that low. Look, I've got an early appointment in the morning. I don't want to have to get gas. Is that too much to ask? Well, no, of course not. I love you. I love you, too, remembers every little detail of every single case, not remember a single word his wife tells him. You told me you were coming. I told you I had a sitter. I told you I was going shopping with Harriet. If I left you here, you'd starve to death. I really like to eat, but I got oh, oh, oh. I've got... Prawns and pepper sauce. Prawns and pepper sauce. Right. Hey.
Grand Duke. Alan? I don't know. He's around here somewhere. Hold on. Anyone seen Alan? I don't think he's around. Can I? Is that him? for me? Oh, hold on. Yeah. I was in the kitchen. Hello. been photo? Not yet. Odd. They haven't been fired. It's an automatic. Probably jammed. They called me at home. Al Polico's new wife. You want to look? Take a look. Let's just uh, see what they've got. Maybe with luck this time luck? we could... I could have put them away last time. She wouldn't be dead. Now hold on, Bully. We'll see you. Nobody got in your way. You didn't have evidence. Oh, you think he's going to leave anything this time? I don't need to know any more than I already know. You can't convict a man on then that. Then I'll get my butt kicked. You want to watch? Come and watch. You might enjoy it. Now, take it easy, Vince. This isn't personal. It is personal. It is personal. Don't get in my way. Let me through. Your Honor, uh, I've never been in a trial like this. I can't respond to Mr. Bugliosi's evidence because uh, he doesn't have any. This is an opening statement, Mr. Kerwin. You're wasting it on me. It's a motion on behalf of Mrs. Stockton, Your Honor. Mr. Bugliosi and his crew have been riding Sandra Stockton and Alan Polico since December 11th, 1966, and they've come up with nothing. Nothing such as a fingerprint, nothing such as a note, nothing. All right. Let's have the attorneys up here. Mr. Polico, you're defending yourself. Please approach the bench. It's going to be fun, don't you think? Now, I am empowered under Section 995 of the California Penal Code to set aside these indictments on the grounds of lack of sufficient evidence to bring this matter to trial. Now, is this your motion, Mr. Kerwin? That's correct. And you join in this motion on your own behalf, Mr. Polico? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Well, there seems to be a lack of direct and physical evidence, Mr. Bugliosi. Sometimes, Your Honor, when a crime is carefully planned, the lack of evidence only proves the diabolical cleverness of the criminal. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if you're being flippant, Mr. Bugliosi, but I will assume otherwise. But I will also put you on notice that unless the evidence in this trial adds up to more than it adds up to at this point, at the appropriate time, I will entertain a motion of a directed verdict of acquittal. Your motion is denied at this time. Mr. Kerwin, Mr. Polico, return to your seats. Mr. Polico, wait this way. Sir, Mr. Polico, are you telling us everything you know? Hey, you are in court. Even the judge can see that there's no evidence. What? What are you doing? Why am I here? That's a good question. Why don't you ask Bugliosi? I'm wearing these things because of that man's ego. Huh? Well, where is he? Yeah. Where's he at? Why don't you talk to him? He's up in the courtroom. It's not ego. They killed her husband. He killed his wife. That's what you're going to prove. I don't know. When you build a case, evidence keeps coming in. You find witnesses, you find weapons. We're not finding anything. You know what they did, Vince. You'll prove it even if nothing else comes in. 
What if I can't? Is that what you're afraid of? Losing? No, of course not. <sighs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Do you see the woman who purchased this handgun in the courtroom today? Oh, yeah, she's uh, sitting right there at the blonde. Identifying the defendant, Sandra Stockton? And was Mrs. Stockton alone when she purchased this gun? Uh, no, there was a guy with her. Do you see that man in this courtroom today? Well, he, uh, yeah, he kind of looked like him. Objection. It's not proper. He looked a lot like him is not a proper identification, Your Honor. Was it the defendant, Mr. Hobart? Yeah, I think it was. When you say you think it was, do uh, you We mean... have his answer, Mr. Bugliosi. He's not sure. Please continue. This is a check Mrs. Stockton deposited on February 16th. It's drawn on the account of the insurance company and made payable to Sandra Stockton. Her endorsement is on the back. Could you tell the jury if there were any other transactions that day? She withdrew $2,500 against the deposit. In cash? In cash. <clears throat> Mr. Polico deposited $2,500 on February 16th. Was that in cash? Yes, sir. You don't have any records to show where I got this cash, do you? No, sir, there are no such records. Of course not. No further questions. Good thing I straightened that out. He almost had me believing it there for a minute. <laughs> you can't talk about anything he might have said when you were married. That's privileged. I can tell about his asking me to marry him again, can I? That's the most important part of your testimony. It proves he was shopping for a wife. You said no, you married Judy. I can't stop thinking about it. That could have been me. No way we can get her to say that on the stand, is there? <laughs> I wonder if that other girl has any idea how close she came. What other girl? Some girl he was dating. He asked her to marry him, too. Who is she? I don't know. Michael Wood. Who is he? Michael Brockington. He works for Alan. You didn't question him? It was just the manager. He didn't know anything. He worked with Alan and Sandra at the auto club. Then he went to the bar with Alan. He's the person Alan's closest to. I don't know what you want from me. He's the best friend I've got. Right. He gave you your job. You want to be loyal. You don't want to do anything to hurt him. Why do you think telling me the truth is going to hurt him, Michael? I didn't say that. Then talk to me. Did he ever tell you where he got the money to buy his bar? Did he ever tell you about his relationship to Sandra Stockton? You're wasting your time. Alan didn't kill Judy. He loved her. Yeah, I guess that's why he insured her, right? Look, I'm not going to listen to this. You're not going to get me to say anything against Alan. He asked Catherine to remarry him just before he married Judy. That's not true. He proposed to some other woman, too. Who was she, Michael? I don't know anything about that. He bought that wedding ring before he ever met Judy Davis. Now, that is a lie. I got a witness who sold it to him. He wanted somebody to wear the ring, Michael. He wanted somebody to marry and insure. Catherine turned him down. The other woman turned him down. Judy said yes. He wanted somebody he could kill, and he found her. Tell me her name, Michael. He redecorated the whole place, top to bottom, and he threw a huge party for the night it opened. I was his date. And what, if anything, happened between you and Mr. Polico at that party? He asked me to marry him. And you said? I thought he was joking. I told him that we hardly knew each other and that he should ask me again in six months if we were still together. How would he respond to that? He said that would be too late, and that in six months he would be married to someone else. Huh. <laughs> How 
would you characterize the dissolution of your marriage to Mr. Polico? It wasn't what you'd call a friendly divorce. There was hostility. Not really. I, I just tried not to see him, that's all. But there was no hostility. Of course there was! You hate me! You want to put me in the gas chamber! Sit down! And I'll have no more of this. Now, if I hold you in contempt, Mr. Polico, you will no longer enjoy the privilege of representing yourself. Continue with the witness, Mr. Bugliosi. Did you tell the jury about the last time you saw your ex-husband? He asked me to meet him in the park. When I got there, he said he wanted to marry me again. What did you say? I told him I thought he was crazy. Did he ever mention marriage again? Not to me. Next thing I heard a few weeks later, he was married. I have no further questions. Catherine, you say that there is no hostility between us. Now, do you really expect these people to believe that you didn't come here to bury me? Objection, Your Honor. I can ask her about hostility, Your Honor. He can question the witness about hostility, Mr. Bugliosi. May I approach? Mr. Polico beat his wife nearly to death. She had to be hospitalized. I've instructed her not to speak of this incident as it would be prejudicial to the defendant. Now, if he wants to get into this area, she's got to be able to talk about it. I have no more questions for this witness, Your Honor. Well, in that case, the witness is excused and we will adjourn until 10 a.m. with the usual admonitions. Don't touch me! Tell me what to do, but don't ever touch me! Just go on, just go on. Take care of this. Can I get a cup of coffee, Mike? Let's talk. The state calls Michael Brockington. He's making the mistake of his life. I remember it was really sweltering. And I got out and got the envelope. I gave it to him, and he opened it, and it was filled with currency. You were able to see this? Oh, he made a point of showing it to me. Did he explain to you where the money came from? No, not at this time. Did you ask him? Alan didn't like questions. I see. And this was sometime late in August, is that correct? August 23rd. When you say the 23rd, are you referring to some sort of notes to refresh your recollection? I just remember. So it's possible you could be off a couple of days. No, I'm very good with dates. What is it about this particular Your date? Honor, is he cross-examining his own witness? There may be a mistake in the recollection. Was there ever a time, Mr. Brockington, that you became aware of the source of this money? about a month later in the bar. He asked me if I ever wondered where his money came from. I said I didn't care, but he said he wanted to tell me anyway. And then he said that he killed Sandra Stockton's husband. They believe him. The testimony is deadly. Our only shot is the date. How is that going to help us? You didn't have $10,000 to give anybody on the 23rd. We can prove that. If we can show the jury that he's lying about the date, well, then maybe he's lying about all of it. Maybe he made the whole thing up. We're going to go over everything you know about Michael Brockett. You're going to wipe him out on the cross-examination. 
What are you worrying about? Last testimony will put him away. If anybody believes him, I'm not gonna let the jury forget he said he got money from Sandra when she didn't have it. Well, the paper believed him. They haven't heard the cross. What? Ah. Bob, I need you to get something for me. What were your duties at the Grand Duke Tavern, Michael? I was the manager, I suppose. Mostly I did the books. You did a lot of other work, too. You ran errands, didn't you? Mm-hmm. You'd get my cleaning? Yes. Do my shopping? Sometimes. In fact, you were my errand boy. Did that bother you? Not really. You left your job at the auto club to be my bookkeeper yeah. and my errand boy. Does that make sense? You said you were planning on opening another bar and that I was going to run this one. But I never did, did I? Did I ever tell you that I was an FBI agent? Oh, I heard you tell other people that. And do you know how I managed to buy the Grand Duke so cheaply? You led the man to believe you were in organized crime. In fact, you pretended to be my bodyguard, isn't that right? That's right. So you knew that I liked to sling it a little, right? Well, didn't the thought ever cross your mind that you gave up a good job, that you were just a flunky, and that this bar you were going to manage was just a lot of talk? Not really. Are you always this naive, Michael? I trusted you. You're saying that I told you that I killed a man, and yet you still trusted me? Come on, Michael. I trusted you as far as our relationship was concerned. Because you didn't believe that I killed anyone any more than you believed that I was in the mafia with you, did you? You made up that story about my confession, didn't you, Michael? No! Just like you made up the story about picking up money from Sandra Stockton, when Mr. Bugliosi here has brought in witness after witness to testify that on August 23rd, Sandra Stockton didn't have a dime to her name. Now, I have no further questions, Michael. Redirect, Mr. Bugliosi. This is a copy of the Los Angeles Tribune, Mr. Brockington. Would you read us the date? August 23rd, 1967. Would you read us what it says in the upper right-hand corner? 15 cents. Below that. It says weather, high 82. That's not very hot for Los Angeles in August, is it? No, sir, it's not. But you testified that it was sweltering the day that you and Alan Polico drove to Sandra Stockton's. You were very clear on that. What's the date on this paper, sir? August 30th. One week later, when Sandra Stockton had plenty of dimes to her name, what's the temperature? hundred and four. We don't live in a perfect world. The mark of Cain isn't branded into a villain's forehead for everyone to see. But when there is a crime, there must be punishment. The defense says there are no witnesses, no fingerprints, no gun. If two people get together and plan a murder, if they put on gloves, kill in the dead of night, Throw the gun away. Are they home free? It's not that easy. Let's go over some of the evidence. We know Sandra Stockton owned a gun. She said she gave it to a man named Dick Scott, whom the police can't find. The defense say the police didn't try to find Dick Scott, but you can bet Sandra Stockton wanted to find him because if he existed, she would have brought him in here. Here's the gun. I had it all the time. It didn't kill anyone. I didn't hear that testimony, did you? 
I'll tell you what I did here. I heard that these two defendants went to Las Vegas to celebrate after she got paid for her husband's death. Oh, the defense will say there's nothing wrong with Sandra Stockton and Alan Polico traveling together after her husband's death, but Sandra Stockton and Alan Polico knew something was wrong. They traveled under assumed names. It's true. The mark of Cain does not exist on the foreheads of murderers. But somehow, somehow, these two defendants have branded themselves murderers, have convicted themselves with their own hands. It's this, ladies and gentlemen, this guilty attempt to cover their tracks that leaves a trail I want you to follow straight back to the two defendants seated right there. Don't be confused by the fact that the evidence in this case is circumstantial. The defense told you that circumstantial evidence is like a chain. You break one length, the whole chain breaks. Well, that's not true. Circumstantial evidence, ladies and gentlemen, is like a rope. And each fact is a strand of that rope. And as we pile one fact on top of another, we add strands and we add strength to that rope. Its strength doesn't come from one strand. It comes from all of them bound together. You break one strand, the rope is still strong. Sandra Stockton remarries her ex-husband, takes out insurance on him. One month later, he's dead. Alan Polico asks three women to marry him, finds one who says yes, takes out insurance on her. One month later, she's dead. Think of all the strands that tie Alan Polico to the death of Henry Stockton, to the death of Judy Polico. Think of all the strands that tie Sandra Stockton to the death of her husband. Can there be any doubt, any reasonable doubt? No. This is the rope the state hangs its case on. Alan Polico, guilty of murder in the first degree. Sandra Stockton, murder in the first degree. Thank you. As to the defendant, Sandra Stockton, how do you find? Count one, the murder of Henry Stockton, guilty as charged, murder in the first degree. <sighs> As to the defendant, Alan Polico, how do you find? Count one, the murder of Henry Stockton. Guilty as charged, murder in the first degree. Count two, the murder of Judy Polico. Guilty as charged, murder in the first degree. You really were wonderful. I was pretty good. You were great. You got lucky, Bowie Olsen. That's all. I think she really loved him. I guess.